Hey Garden Nerds, I'm Christy Wilhelmy from Garden Nerd. It's August and I wanted to give you a bit of the good, the bad, and the garden ugly because this is a little bit of a reality check. I know that you're probably used to seeing pretty photos and beautiful Instagram posts of pretty things all the time in the garden year round, but it, that is not the reality of a Southern California garden in August. And even if you live in a warm winter climate elsewhere, you have a really long growing season. And for us here where I live, these plants have been in the ground and flourishing since late March, early April. And so things look a little sad right now. So I'm gonna share with you what worked and what didn't for the year, uh, for this growing season, and show you some of the good, the bad, and the ugly. Starting with the uh, volunteer pollinator garden that you see right here in front of you. These are filled with, uh, there's some um, clary sage and some comfrey that's doing well but the rest not so much i can see some seeds starting for nasturtiums and uh, calendula but all of the parsley and celery and some of the older marigolds are not looking so good but we leave them because we want them to go to seed and reseed next year. So it's okay to let them get a little bit ugly. Oh, and you'll see some milkweed in there too. So it's okay to let these things get a little ugly and uh, they're gonna reseed themselves next year and you won't have to work so hard. Let's move on. Let's talk about some of the bad. <laughs> we had a lot of bad this year. I wanna say 2020, when we all went inside during the pandemic, the rats and squirrels and other creatures took their time and they repopulated like crazy. So if you experienced an uptick in vermin in your garden, you are not alone. This is my tree kale. It has been decimated, absolutely decimated <laughs> by rats. So those are our rat traps. We have 20 that we set, including a live trap that never has been triggered. We've tried electronic traps, we've tried the snap traps, we've tried just about everything. And this year, the rats are really winning. I just wanna say that. So if this is happening to you, you're not alone. Also, we have two beds with squashes planted and every single squash has been eaten by rats. Uh, at one point, we put up a night vision uh, motion sensor camera and we took pictures of how big the rats were and they were enormous. Way too big for this little snap traps we've been using. Anyway, just wanna give you a reality check. This happens, even to professionals, even to people who know how to deal with this kind of stuff, it still happens. So let's move on to some of the good. Some of the good things that have happened in our garden or rather things that worked, despite all the other stuff that was going on this year, basil. We grew eight different types of basil and I've made at least 10 pints of pesto that are going in the freezer. Uh, these are just starting to succumb to downy mildew. Usually that happens a lot earlier in the year but we're really lucky this year and the basil has paid off. Also behind it the tomatoes they look a little bit sad but basically we cut down all of the parts that weren't doing well and after the first flush of tomatoes and now there's new growth that will hopefully bring us some late summer tomatoes. Also come with me. I don't know if you remember I did a quick video on the tomatoes in the pots here that had been eaten through the stems had been completely eaten through by rats well they all regrew and they're all flowering and setting out some fruit so we're hoping again for a little bit of a late season flush of tomatoes we'll see now let's go look at the beans but before we get to the beans, green onions. Now, we kind of treat these as perennials, uh, and recently I discovered they were all covered with rust. So I cut every single one of these green onions down to uh, the soil level, and they've all grown back sans rust. So we're doing all right on this. We turned something ugly and bad into something good. Now onto the beans. This year, one of the really good things about the garden has been the yard long beans. These are all just getting started. They're only about, you know, 12 to 15 inches long, but uh, some of them, like this guy, is even longer. And they have so far only been nibbled on a little bit by the rats, but for the most part, we've been enjoying them. In fact, we just had some for dinner. Now let's talk about some of the things that we're going to be doing to prep for fall. Come on. 
So this is our corn. It did pretty well this year. Uh, the rats did eat many of the tassels and that made for a lot of toothless sister cousin corn where the ears are not quite completely filled out because they didn't have any male flowers to pollinate the tassels. Still, we got a pretty good harvest and now it's time to cut these down to the soil level, leaving the roots in place. And we're going to put them right over there into <laughs> just to give you perspective how big this pile is this giant pile of biomass that we are going to shred and turn into an active batch thermal compost pile that will cook over winter and will have really nice compost biologically active active biologically active compost ready for spring Ta -da! finally a lot more good. Our citrus trees are going gangbusters this year. Our navel orange and our Meyer lemon and even though they have yellow leaves on them that's just because they're really starting to put the fruit, the effort, the energy into the fruit production. I could feed them more but they don't need it. As you can see there's just <laughs> this tree is full of fruit and uh, even the newer trees that I planted in preparation for my new book Grow Your Own Mini Fruit Garden they're doing well too. Once uh, the holidays roll around, these are gonna be ripe and ready to pick and we'll be enjoying citrus all winter long. So that's what's going on here at Garden Nerd headquarters in the heat of summer in the middle of August. It's kind of our dead zone and it's okay if your garden looks like that. Once the cooler temperatures roll around, you can put in your fall crops and enjoy what is my favorite growing season. Uh, if you like this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe and Mittens is here. Hey girl, how's it going? Yeah, she loves the spotlight. <laughs> um, share this video with your friends and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm gonna have to do this again. <laughs> Smittens threw me off. <laughs> oh, you know the drill. Like and subscribe and share this with your friends. Consider becoming a Patreon subscriber to support all the free stuff that we do here at Garden Nerd. Of course, you can find more information about growing your own food in my book, Gardening for Geeks. And of course, learn about how to grow fruit trees successfully in my brand new book, Grow Your Own Mini Fruit Garden. That's it. Happy gardening. <laughs>